Before we go on to look at overhanging beams, let's first of all look at cantilever beams and just check our understanding of the conditions for static equilibrium. So we have two different setups there. We have a cantilever with two point loads, F1 and F2, and then we have a cantilever with two point loads, F1, F2, and also a UDL. On the right hand side, we have our two conditions for static equilibrium. The first states that the sum of the clockwise moments equals the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. And the second states that the sum of the forces pushing down equals the sum of the forces pushing up. Now, if we were asked to calculate the support reaction, in this instance, we only have one support reaction. And that support reaction is at the wall. And we'll call that R for reaction force. Now, if we look at that scenario there, hopefully you can see that we only actually need to apply one of the conditions for static equilibrium to find that force R. And the condition that we would apply in this case is the second condition, where the sum of the forces pushing down equals the sum of the forces pushing up. Now, for that first beam there, we can see we have two forces pushing down, F1 and F2, and we only have one force pushing up, which is the support reaction. Therefore, for that first beam, we should be able to see that R is simply F1 plus F2. Now where the second condition for static equilibrium comes in is because at the support we would also need to apply a turning moment. And that turning moment would have to offset the turning moments caused by F1 and F2. Well, in reality, what would happen is that the beam would be inset into the wall and in doing so, we would be able to apply that opposing turning moment. Now, if we relate all of that to the second beam, in the second instance, once again, we can see we have two forces acting down F1 and F2, but we also have a force as a result of the UDL. Now, the magnitude of the UDL is W newtons per meter, but in order to work out the total size of the force, capital W, we would need to multiply the weight per meter by the length of the beam. And in doing so, we could replace that UDL with a point load at the center of the beam there. Now, once again, if we want to calculate the support reaction, we only need to apply one of the conditions for static equilibrium. And again, it's the second condition, because here we can see now we have three forces acting downwards, F1, F2, and capital W. Therefore, the support reaction in this case is just F1 plus F2 plus W. Now, the same is true about the turning moments. Here we can see F1, F2 and W are all trying to turn our beam in a clockwise direction. And those clockwise turning moments would need to be offset. And the way they would be offset is because if our beam projected into the wall, like so, then that would provide the opposing turning moment to offset the clockwise turning moments there. So all we really need to do when looking at cantilevers is recall our two conditions for static equilibrium, where the sum of the clockwise moments equals the sum of the anti-clockwise moments, and the second, where the sum of the forces down equals the sum of the forces pushing up.